Hey, welcome back. It's Diane at I and I Studio, and today we're going to continue the little triptych we were working on last week. This is a small triptych on uh, plywood, three-quarter inch plywood that I have gessoed. Um, last week we were working with depth, how to get depth in your painting. This week I'm adding some collage and some pencil marks. So let's get started with that. Okay, so today we're going to add some collage elements. And I told you last week I have a box of collage papers that I keep, that I save. And I go through it and try to pick out some papers that seem like they would match with this painting or enhance the painting or work well with it. This is a piece of calligraphy I did in China. Um, I like the abstract black marks. They're not really Chinese characters. They're just abstracted work. This is a piece of a wooden block print, a textile block print, just a scrap that's left over from another project. I have a YouTube video on how to make textile block prints if you'd like to find out more about that. But this looks like it would work beautifully here. And this is a piece of rice paper with um, marks made from my handmade brushes. And these thin rice papers will become transparent when I put them down. I love the way it continues the black line. This is a piece of Sumi ink washed rice paper. This was a landscape painting that I began in China. And I love the ink wash. I know the paper is so thin it would become transparent and could give us some very interesting depth. So this is something I want to try. It will allow the reds to come through, pencil marks to come through. I like this black mark, the way it corresponds with the floating black mark we did last week. So this is a real contender. I think I'm going to use this one for sure. This is a piece of newsprint that I have washed with our rust solution. And I do have a YouTube video on making a rust solution patina. You can check out. It's done with vinegar and steel wool. I took this one and I soaked it in the vinegar. Then I dried it in the oven and it became quite brittle. I've used this in other projects and I know when I put it down, the paper will get very wrinkled, which can give some incredible effects. If you let the paper dry with the wrinkles, you can sand back through the wrinkles and what's be beneath the paper will show through as interesting line work. So that is something that I may use on this painting as well. This is a piece of rice paper. I love this particular paper. I like the white color and it has fibers in it. So although it will be transparent, you'll still be able to see the fibers underneath. And this is a piece of parchment paper that I've actually baked cookies on at home. And the parchment paper will also become very transparent, but the oil marks from the cookies will show up differently as a different type of stain, which could be pretty interesting. This is another piece from China. This was a landscape painting. These were tree leaves that we painted and I've probably used other parts of the painting in something else, but they have a nice pattern. Sometimes I use books. I like the vintage books because I like the color of the paper. It yellows. This book is about sewing, so it's a little more meaningful to me. My mother would sew my clothes, and I was also a sewer. 
So I like to use things that have a little bit more meaning. This is a piece of a paper bag. I like the circle shape. I like the nature of the letters. I don't really care what the letters say. Uh, chances are I won't use the whole thing. I would paint over it, draw over it, tear part of it. It's just the nature of the lettering that I like and the shape. This is another wooden textile block print. Um, I'd actually use this one in another collage. So you can see it has some polymer medium on the back and it will adhere differently to the wood because of that polymer medium on the back. I'm not exactly sure what to expect, but we can try it and see if it doesn't work. We can always pick it up and take it off. This is a piece of shibori paper that I got at Blick Art. I love it for collage because the color is so rich and I love that shibori pattern, which is like a tie-dye. This piece also came off of a, another painting, so you can see it's covered with white paint on the back, so that will affect the way it adheres. We'll just have to see what happens. It may be salvageable, who knows. Here's another piece of my practice calligraphy from China. This was an actual Chinese character. I don't remember what it meant. I'm sure it's a very poorly rendered character, but um, it still has uh, some beautiful movement in it that could add to a collage sometime. These are origami papers. I don't generally like to use papers that have been pre-printed. However, some of these papers are beautiful and if the piece calls for it, I'll use it. I like handmade papers. They tend to have a particular energy that the maker uh, infuses into them. So they're a little different. Um, these are a couple more of those origami ready-mades. This is another book, vintage, different type of paper quality. And this is a drawing, a failed drawing that I cut up. There's marks on both sides. Those make nice collage pieces. And this is a piece of fabric. You can collage fabric as well. I often do and uh, then you can paint over it. So those are all the possibilities. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna take a good look at what I have and try to evaluate. I like this uh, piece of paper for this area here. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna attach that. But before I do that, I'm gonna do some pencil work and I'm using Stabilo pencil. Stabilo is an aquarellable pencil, and that means it is activated with water, like a watercolor pencil. So you can get some very beautiful runny marks. I'm going to dip the pencil in the water before I start to make the marks darker. Sometimes I draw with the dry pencil, and then I activate them with water on my finger, or I might spray a little water. But be, uh, be loose with your marks. Don't choke up on the pencil. Um, hold it in any other way than you would a writing tool. Grip the pencil differently. I'm going to put a little on the other side as well and see what I get. Uh, I can dip my finger in some water and smear it a bit. That looks great. Good, I, I like the way that looks. It's not precious, but there's a lot of movement in it when you wet the mark. Next, I'm gonna attach this piece of collage. And I'm kind of a gorilla collage artist. I don't, I'm not very careful about getting my papers perfect, 
Mine always have bubbles and wrinkles. That's okay for the type of work I'm doing. And I generally will pour the polymer medium directly onto the board or the substrate I'm using. Then I scrape it to spread it. I'm using golden polymer medium gloss for this. I'm spreading it with a scraper. This is a wide painter scraper. I think it's probably a four inch. Go ahead and put the collage down. I'm going to line it up with the line I already have. So it looks like a continuation of that mark. I'm happy with that. And then I will put some more polymer medium over the top. And what this does is it kind of melts the rice paper into the wood so that you can't really tell the difference between the paper and the paint and the wood. Oftentimes when you're collaging, you're using beautiful papers that you may want to see the paper, see the quality of the paper. And in that case, I wouldn't cover it. This rice paper is thin. As I put it down, I can see the pencil marks I just did coming through, and I, I like that. I'm not afraid to use my fingers to spread it around a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's looking great so far. I like this little piece of the textile block print down here. It seems to relate to the line above it and some of the other marks, the collage piece I just put down. But I'm going over the seam of two of the panels, so I'm going to have to tear it because the panels are not uh, fastened to each other. So just tear it a little bit and go ahead and get that down. You could choose to line up the other side so it looks continuous or you can offset it. It depends on what you're doing, uh, the choice is yours. When you're doing triptychs, they don't always have to line up. In this case, I'm going to line it up. And that's looking good. Some more of the polymer medium on top. And this will meld it nicely together. Another thing that polymer medium does is once it dries and you go back into the painting, it acts as a barrier, uh, sort of like um, a cheat. You know, you can, you can paint on it. If you don't like it, just wipe it off. So that's a little paint hack for you. Next, I'm going to put this large piece of landscape painting that I did in China. And this is on a very, very thin piece of rice paper. I know it's going to look beautiful when I put it down because it's going to be very transparent. Everything underneath is going to show. So let me get my polymer medium down. I need quite a bit. This is a large paper. You spread it fairly thin with your scraper, making sure you get the medium everywhere. Then lay it on top, smooth it out. Already I can see the transparency coming through, which is nice. There's an area that I missed with the medium. Let me get a little more down there. You can carefully lift the paper and put a little more down if you need to. Paper is very fragile. And then I want to put the polymer medium on the top to bring out that transparency. And then I can evaluate whether or not I'm going to leave all the paper on or take some off. But this is just beautiful. 
and really adding an interesting depth, veil-like depth. Let me get a little more on the top. Being very, very careful not to tear the paper. This big clumsy scraper can easily tear this delicate paper. And if that happens, I have to deal with it. Sometimes those mistakes are good fortune. Sometimes they work out great. So let's take a look and see what's happening here. Now I want to evaluate whether or not I'm going to keep the whole piece of paper on or whether I'm going to remove some. It's a good time to slow down, stop, take a look. Remember, in the second stage of the painting, we do spend a lot more time looking. I don't like that straight edge across the bottom. I think I'm going to take some of that off, and I'll just use my scraper for that. Just a little pressure on the scraper, and I can pull that paper right off. And already that's looking better, breaking up that straight line. I don't mind using my fingers to pull a little bit of it away. And then if there's any little um, bits left, uh, I can brush them off with my hand or pick them off with my hand. Sometimes when you cut the paper, you get little, little crumblies. I love this area up here, the transparency. And I'm evaluating whether or not I want to open up some of that red so I can see the red more vividly rather than the whole thing being veiled. So I think I'm going to take some of the red off. Now, because I've used the scraper to pull paper off, I've got to be sure I clean that scraper. Just take a paper towel, wipe the paper off. And because things are still very wet, it's, it's easy to make adjustments now. I'm going to include that black corner and try to pull that off a little bit too. There, that works good. Yeah, I like the way that looks. Get some of the vivid red back. It isn't under the veil of the rice paper. Just finagle that corner a little bit. That's looking good. Then I think I'm going to take some of this paper off and reveal some of that red as well. I love that. And I'm wondering about the black line. Do I want the whole black line to be veiled or do I want to open up some of the black line as well? I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to take some of that black, the veil off the black line, the veil of rice paper. And I will just scrape that through. There we go. Yeah, I like that better. That looks good. I'm loving that. And then I just use my fingers and smooth it out a bit, trying to be real careful. Like I said, the paper's delicate, and the more it soaks up the medium, the more delicate it gets. using my fingers to smooth out some of the bubbles, being very, very careful. It's so easy to, to tear the paper at this point. I'm pretty pleased with the way that looks. I like the continuous black line that's uh, floating through the entire panel. Beautiful. I'd like to use this piece of rusty 
newsprint because I know the wrinkles could be really beautiful in here but I don't really want to cover up this area it really looks good and I just don't know if there's a place for this newsprint I really don't want to lose the pencil work I did so I don't know if I'm gaining anything by adding this paper what would happen if I put it up here? See, I really want to use it, but hmm, might not happen. I just don't know if I'm gaining anything by doing that. So even though you might want to do something, you may have to give up the idea because it's just not working, at least at this point. I'm going to put it aside maybe later. As we fine-tune the painting, we'll find a place for it. Uh, see, I keep trying, trying to work it in. It just doesn't want to, doesn't want to fit. So I'm going to, I'm going to abandon the paper. One more thing that I want to do, as I had mentioned earlier, we can put clear medium over the, over the painting so that when we work back into it next, this acts as a resist. It's a, a real cheat. It's a hack. Um, put the gloss medium down, then we can paint over it. And if we don't like what we painted, we can wipe it off with a paper towel. So I'm going to do that at this point. And I'm careful not to really go over the collaged areas that are still wet because they're very delicate and they could tear. But certainly over the areas we painted last week, over the pencil, and it will change the pencil a little, but I like the way that it's changing it. And being careful of the collage, just kind of working around that area. Everything takes time, and you don't want to rush the drawing. You don't want to rush the process. I work, you know, a half an hour on this one, and then I'll work on something else in the studio for the rest of the afternoon. I don't have to stay with one painting all day long. It's just a good idea to get your timing down, know what's appropriate, know when to quit. And that's one of the hardest things for any of us is knowing when to stop. And I am at a good stopping place today. Um, I don't think I'm going to put the medium over the third panel. It's a little too delicate with the rice paper. It's way too wet to be doing that. Plus, we've already gone over that collage with the medium. So I think we're, we're in pretty good shape with all of these. The scraper will leave lines, will leave marks. Sometimes I like the marks, sometimes I don't. And I don't mind taking my hand to smooth some of those marks out if it's necessary. Don't worry about the edges too much because I will sand the edges when I'm done. So there we have it for the day. I'm pretty pleased this painting is coming along. Next time we'll do a little, little bit of detail work. We'll, we'll work with the colors a little to bring them up. Evaluate, see if... See if we're lacking anything. And try to figure out what the painting is, is really about for me and what it might be about for other viewers. So it's, it's nice to paint for yourself. It's great to keep your audience in mind. Okay, so today we worked on putting some collage elements and some pencil on the painting. You notice that working on the painting today, we 
took more time to think about what we were going to place, where we were going to place it. Last week, the painting was it was more in the beginning stages of the painting, so we, we were quick, we weren't worried, we put things down, and then we looked at it and responded. <clears throat> this week, we more contemplated where we might put things before we place them. Paintings have a rhythm. When you start out, you can be as crazy as you want. You don't have to put a huge amount of thought into it. You want to put your body into it, make marks, respond to those marks. When you get to the stage, the mid-stage of the painting, you slow down. You spend more time looking. You're a little more careful about where you place things. Not careful enough to stop you or to get you uptight. You, you still want to keep your, your spontaneity as you work into the painting, but it's a little more thoughtful time. It's a time where you may sit down with the painting. Um, when you start, you often want to stand and really put your body into it. Now we're slowing down a bit. We could be standing, sitting, and as we hone in on completing the painting, it will get even slower. We'll spend even more time thinking about what it is that the painting is, what it wants to be, even thinking about what the meaning of the painting is, not only for me personally, but how it relates to the viewer. That's something we're going to talk about next week, okay? So thank you for joining me. Um, as you know, Give me a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe, and share. It's really appreciated. Be safe. Take care. We'll see you next week.